Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode. Uh, so in this one, we're actually going to look at instantiating, uh, well, sorry, not instantiating, we're actually going to be looking at setting up our new Shooter AI. Uh, this is a big one that people have asked for for quite a while, um, and with the new beta AI template, it's actually really quite simple to get AI that are shooting now. Um, so as you can see, we've got this uh, character here in the center that I've already set up. So I'll just hit play mode here and I'll show you what he does. As soon as it starts up, there we go. So I'm just going to run over. And you can see now that he's equipped with the staff weapon that I've been using in uh, other videos. I'll run up and get his attention. And now he's going to start shooting at me. Pew! Now the bullets aren't doing anything to me because um, of the way I've actually got them set up at the moment. They're not, they don't do anything. Um, that's actually to do with the weapon itself, not the shooter script. But as you can see, he's shooting, it's colliding with things. And it looks pretty cool. Let's knock this guy down. And of course we can attack him. And he keeps trying to move backwards out of the way. Because of course he's trying to line up his shot. And of course you can put any kind of um, shooting weapon uh, on the shooter character. And they'll uh, automatically take to um, the way that it's set up. So I'll just show you how to do that now. It's actually really simple. <clears throat> much like the um, melee AI. Actually, what I will do with that, um, on that part there where you can drop the weapon in and they'll automatically go to the mode that they've got, I want to set up a weapon on our melee character first. Uh, so let's... At the moment, so we've got this one here. This is one of the ones that comes with the beta AI kit. Um, it's a melee fighter that's already armed and he's using the two-handed sword or the, the big katana that he's got. Um, so easiest way that we can actually put a weapon in the goblin's hand is we can actually just grab the katana out of it, which I've already, whoops, I've already actually moved it out of his thing, so we don't even need him anymore. We can just turn that off. And where did my katana go? Whoops. Why can't I find it? What am I not, what am I not seeing here? I'm just going to click on it here. There we go. All right, so it's down the bottom here. I don't know why that took me so long to find. Um, all right, so we can click F, and yeah, we've got the hitbox down here. What we actually want is the hand, um, because the hand is where the um, katana item will be held and where it's going to read from when we go to set it up. So all we need to do is actually just drag that, <coughs> excuse me, in the hierarchy down to the hand. We want to make it a child object of hand right, so we know that it's uh, equipped in the right. And then we're going to need to zero out some of the values. So we're going to go zero, zero, zero for the position. And now you can see it's roughly where we need it to be over his hand. Uh, we're going to go ahead and rotate it so that it's in the correct position. So, yep, about that's fine. And then we're going to shift it down just so that it sits in his hand, much like you would um, if you were setting it up for the play. You need it to actually sit in the right spot. So we want to try and get it so that it sits within the hand, maybe shift it up a little bit, not too far because it's actually going to be a two-handed one, so his bottom hand's going to grab onto the bottom section here, um, as long as the IK is right for that, it should be because it's the base set. So now when we have that there, as long as it's a child object, uh, if we come down to Goblin level 1, if we have a look down in the melee manager, we've got left weapon and right weapon, it'll say nothing, but when we actually start the game, that's going to automatically fill up, because it's going to read the holding section, so if we go, um, I don't have, yeah, okay, so the way the, the NPCs work, or the AI works, is that if you drop that into the hand slot, um, it will automatically read it as that's where the weapon is, that's basically the equip point, uh, the default equip point for uh, an enemy character. Um, so what we'll do is I'm going to select the shaman. I'm just going to turn him off so that he doesn't get in our way. I'm going to hit play now. <clears throat> and as we run down, you can see he's automatically equipped the weapon and he's switched to the new animations for that weapon. And now he'll come through. He's going to try and attack me with it. And you can see he's using the correct attack that nearly killed me in one go. So we probably don't want to give him that weapon. Um, Alright, so we can turn that off now, so we know that that works, uh, so I'm also, uh, well I don't need to put the shaman on, I'm going to leave him off because we're going to make one from scratch, so I'm going to turn this goblin off as well. Alright, so to make the uh, shooter character, pretty much the same way that we made the uh, melee character, we're going to go create new AI, we're going to select our character, we're going to go shaman, and we're going to use it from our assets folder to get the base one, 
Character Goblin Shaman, no worries. Uh, animated controller, this time I'm actually going to choose uh, Shooter Melee version 2. Um, or even AI Shooter actually should uh, work. Yeah, AI Shooter controller. Uh, and then we're going to go FSM Behavior Controller. And we're going to choose um, just the regular shooter. You can always choose Shooter Boss and Shooter Sniper. They've got um, a little bit of different stuff added onto them. Have a look at the FSM for those and see if it's got extra stuff you want, depending on whether you're setting up a boss character. I'm just going for a generic shooter, and I don't want one that's trying to run away super far away to take a shot at me. Um, I just want a plain old person that can shoot magic at me. And as you can see, it's already a humanoid model, so it just loads in easily. We hit Create. And there we go. Now we've got the Goblin Shaman, so I'm just going to do this. Gob Shaman 2. Gweeb. Gweeb Shaman. That's fine. Um, and if we come down here, we need to set up the, the properties again for it. Um, sorry, on the V Control AI shooter. So we go down to start. I'm just going to just turn off the Disable Agent. Uh, health. Current health. Well, I set that down to 65. Waypoint. Uh, we can use the same patrol waypoint that we did for the melee character. Self starting point. Um, detection, we need to change the values there, so the detect layer, we want it to detect the player. So we're just going to change the layer and tag to player, and leave the default, it can see through the other enemy, that's fine. It just can't see through buildings, so we leave it as that. Um, combat setting, attack distance, I'm going to set that to 4, so that it you know, tries to get away to 4 units away from the character to um, shoot. And then we're going to leave these values as it is, because um, yeah, the default values work fine. Uh, so now if we have a look, oh he's going to be over here, so I'm going to click on him, just line it up with where I need it, Control shift f and now we've got our character here, going to zero out the rotations, bring him back down onto the ground as much as I can, and now if we play, if we run up to him, he won't be able to do much because he doesn't actually have a weapon on him, but we can run up. Um, now he also doesn't have a combat controller, so oh, he seems to be able to fight. He can block. He doesn't really want to fight back though because he doesn't have the melee manager. So what we can do, let's see what happens if we add the melee manager onto him. So V uh, melee manager. We open it up now he's got that now the AI shooter is the um, one we're using I don't know if that's actually got if we go to the animator does it have what we need for that so upper body aiming full body attacks strong attacks and arms yep yep that actually seems to have it so that's cool let's try that out and see whether he can actually attack us now now that we've got the melee manager although we need to set up the attack layers just to make sure that you can pass the damage through, that's uh, the main problem. Right. He's still trying to run away to get that distance to attack us, because his main controller is telling him to run away. So that's fine. Now all that means is that we really don't need... Um, uh, where are we? Gold Shaman 2. We actually don't need that uh, uh, melee manager so we can get rid of that. I'll, we'll leave it there for now because um, we've already put on all the hitboxes and things like that. Uh, there probably is a way to get the shooter and the melee working together so that if he runs out of ammo we can switch to a sword. Um, I'll look into that a bit later and add that into a future episode. For now, let me just show you how to get the shooter working. Uh, so let's go to the wizard stuff. I'm going to type in that. So we just want to drag this in a sand. I'm not going to drag it directly onto the model because it is going to change the transform with um, being a child object. So I'm going to bring it there just into the game world um, and then of course it will spawn in at the correct sizing. And then I'm going to click on the right hand box again and we've got the hand exposed now. So I'm going to click back on our wizard stuff and I'm going to drag it down to the right hand to make sure it's a child of the right hand. And now you can see it's going to sit down here so we want to zero that out again. Zero, 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 and it's already facing the way we want it. So let's do it like this. Move it in there a little bit. Uh, you know what? Yeah, there's pretty good. Maybe bring it up just a tiny little bit. All right. So now that it's in his hand, it's um, parity to that. It should automatically read that it's got the weapon equipped, 
and it should change all of the animator parameters and his ability to attack me now. Yep, so as you can see he's walking along with the weapon and that's working fine. Uh, we'll go and alert him to my presence. Hello, how you doing? And then bang, so... And that that secondary noise you're hearing is when it's colliding, it's set up to do the same zappy noise. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> so there you go that's how you set up a shooter character sorry if that uh, blew out the noise there but that's pretty cool um yeah so that's how easy it is to get the shooter character now what i would actually do is i'd make another version of this weapon because this is the one that the player is going to use so all of the values i want it to work for the player but i might want it to be a little bit different to what the um the goblins or the enemy uses so all i would do is i'd actually just duplicate that um that weapon uh, I would also put it in the items list here, um, but I wouldn't have it spawnable for the player. So there wouldn't be anything that would drop that particular weapon, but just so that I know that it's got the right stats and everything for it, and it is in the item menu, um, it should be fine. It might, I, I don't think it needs, I think it just, all it needs is the um, weapon script on it, um, or the shooter weapon script, uh, to work correctly. Um, so that that would be what I do there. I'd just I'd just duplicate it and change it. I'm not actually going to use this stuff. I'm going to use like a little goblin slingshot or a goblin wand or something like that. Um, but I'll set that up at a later time. But this is yeah just how you set up a shooter character. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next episode.